Hi, this is Dan Edmondson with another tip of the week. Today, what I want to talk about is comparison painting. And what I mean by that is a lot of times when we paint, we will try to take a spot and we'll say, okay, I want to match this spot. And you'll try to mix that color and put it on your painting, and then you'll go to the next spot, say, okay, I want to mix this spot, and you'll mix that spot and put it on your painting, and so on and so forth. And you do this with all these little spots all around the entire painting, okay? Well, there's a little bit easier way to do that. So what you would do is, at first, you would say, uh, let's say, let's take this tree, for example. You would say I am going to mix this spot right here okay and you would take go through whatever steps you go through in order to mix that color and then you would put it on your canvas right well then you would come to this next spot just adjacent to it and the way I want you to think about painting is rather than trying to mix that spot independently instead I'd like to say well this looks like this spot only it's a little bit cooler and a little bit lighter so what you do is you just mix up do you take that original mixture and, and hopefully you mixed a lot of it but knowing now going forward you would mix a lot of this color and you know what I call the basic standard color for this tree right and you mix up a lot of it and say okay well now this color here is going to be lighter and bluer so you would add some blue and some white to it and then you'd mix that color and that then that would look right and then you'd take this color and you'd compare this color back to the original color and say well it's about the same value but it's a little darker and maybe slightly cooler so you would add blue to it and maybe a touch of white to counteract the um the value of the blue and it would help you be dead on right and that's why a lot of painters will say what you do is you place your lightest light your darkest dark in your paintings right and that helps gives you something to jump off of and i think it's also good to you place the darkest dark, the lightest light, and a middle value. And that gives you some things to compare to, right? And that way, when you're in the throes of painting, you just compare to those three spots. And you say, where does it fall between for those three spots? And then you just mix accordingly, you know, not only in value, but color as well. You can, A lot of times people will put in the most colorful thing. And they'll say, okay, that's the most colorful thing. So I know nothing else in the painting is as colorful as that or as red as that. You see what I'm saying? Now let's tie the, this all together with your palette, okay? Now, this is where you might want a bigger palette because you want to leave these mixtures on the palette. So then you're going through painting. You say, okay, well, this is this color here, but this is a little lighter and a little greener. So you just look at what you have on your palette and you mix right next to it a little lighter and a little greener and you can't go wrong it makes it so easy I can't tell you so you do this for the whole painting and you just compare one piece of paint to another piece of paint to another piece of paint to another piece of paint all the way through it now you may have to make some larger piles say for the rocks and for the trees or for the greenery and gives you a jumping off point but if you try to mix every piece of paint as if it's a jigsaw puzzle, most likely it's going to be off and the painting will lack structural unity. So tip for the takeaway is compare and mix on your palette. Don't try to mix what's up there. Instead say this is bluer, cooler, warmer, etc. than what I just mixed and then you mix accordingly. It's a much easier way to paint and a lot more accurate. Okay? That's Dan with another tip of the week. You have a wonderful week. We'll talk at you next week. Have a great day.